Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, my name's Tony from Build with A&E, and I'm joined with Aaron Jones from Birmingham Flat Roofing, and he's going to explain all about the GRP system because we've never installed GRP. We know nothing about it. As you know, guys, we're very much into alley tricks and razor tricks. So Aaron has very kindly come here to demonstrate, and he's going to explain all the relevant things to do and not to do. So thank you very much for giving Cheers. us the time. Tony, That's really, really good. It. I'm going to hand you over now to Aaron. Take it away. Hi guys, my name's Aaron from Birmingham Flat Roofing. Just a little background about myself, I run my own flat roofing company. I also run a company called Train to Gain and we are MVQ assessors that go out and actually do MVQ assessments for people on site for the liquid waterproofing. I also work alongside ResTech and do their one day training days for them at various merchants around the country. Today, literally we're gonna go through as much as we can to help you guys not fall into any issues with the fibre glass here and show you the do's and don'ts and generally take you through our flat roof from start to finish. I'm just going to go through some of the tools that you actually need to fit the boards and the fiberglass and moving through as you use them. Starting off obviously you're going to be fitting your boards so obviously a decent pair of gloves. You've got your crosscut saws with your, your guide rails, screw gum and screws obviously to fix the boards down and obviously make sure you've got the correct expansion gaps and obviously any, any dirt or debris sort of like sawdust or anything like that can be swept off and blown off at the same time. Use your correct PPE guys so obviously ear protection and eye protection at all times it is important we, we don't want any accidents. Moving through then as you go on to actually fit your boards down and you've got your deck complete and it's nice and solid with the correct expansions you'd move down then to looking at your trims so we'd look at first cutting the trims so you can either use a sharp pair of snips but the preferred method is normally a cutting blade and an angle grinder again using eye protection and a very heavy duty pair of gloves because these trims can be very sharp moving further on you've got your hammer and you've got your clout nails so you need minimum 15 mil clout nail that will go straight down into the actual deck surface and your spacings are normally about 100 mil not exceeding 150 mil looking at actually mixing the products either standard whisk if you're doing smaller mixes or a actual whisk and a drill but obviously if you're using a whisk and a drill you want it on the lowest setting you don't want to be spinning it that fast that you're actually generating heat in the actual mix itself when you look at actually applying the substrate i would also use rubber gloves i tend to double glove so if you're doing detail work you can take the outer layer off and still continue and keep your tools fairly clean as you're going because it can be messy at times. On this 2020 system, we don't use consolidating rollers because the viscosity of the uh, resin and the matting is 225 grams. So we don't need to use the bubble busters and we use the fluffy rollers throughout the system. Now, obviously on your small details, you'll use a smaller roller, four inch roller with either paint brushes to get into the actual details. And when you're laying your main deck down, you use probably a nine or a 10 inch roller and probably on a, a stale as well, just obviously so you can get the, get the longer reach across the products. With the trims, obviously we want to glue those together as well as nail them. So on this project, we're using the OB1 sealants, which is a neutral sealant and an adhesive. So therefore we can use that in conjunction with the fiberglass and you won't get any issues regarding uh, delamination from that. Last of all, when you're actually mixing the substrates, you want to use a thermometer, an infrared sensor, which basically, if you shine it at the roof, it'll give you a temperature reading. That goes in conjunction with the reading and the tables on the back of the tins, and that will give you the correct amount of catalyst that you need to actually put into the actual resin itself. And it stops any issues regarding under catalyzing or over catalyzing because you're doing it to temperatures. And I'd say every time you do a mix, you actually take a temperature reading because as the day goes on, it could be quite cool in the morning and it could get hotter throughout the day. So you need to adjust your temperatures accordingly. Obviously, if you're doing in a built up environment, for instance, I would use uh, ventilating equipment or breather uh, equipment such as a, a, a dust mask. Uh, basically because obviously you know this is hazardous to your health obviously this is probably a bit excessive for being out on a roof but if you've got a, a dust mask as well and eye protection especially when you mix in 
What I was going to do now is just go through how we would reinforce the joints on an 8 before sheet, for instance. So we've done like a little mock demo for you. The reason we actually aim for the expansion joints in between, we look normally about a 3mm gap in between. Uh, that gives the boards enough movement to expand and contract because obviously it's a timber, it's going to swell and it's going to shrink during heat. One of the main problems you'll get, and it's pretty common in fiberglassing for people who are not sure about the actual product and how to install properly, is they will butt the boards completely up. Now the issue with that, especially on standard fiberglass, standard fiberglass goes pretty rigid. The issue you can get if the boards are compressed to each other is that there's no room for the boards to expand and contract. So they can push that hard that they can actually rupture the joint. This can lead to water ingress into the building and it also kind of gives fiberglass a bad name, but it is normally down to poor installation of the boards. So when you're putting eight before sheets up, for instance, you need a minimum of a three mil gap, just like a three mil packer in between while you're installing the boards. From this point now, with the 2020 system, unlike standard fiberglass where we'd use a clear resin, we actually use a white primer, which is the 5kg white primer. So we've decanted that into a bucket. And what we'll do is we'll take a, a temperature reading now. This on its own won't go off, basically. You have to add catalyst into it. Now, if the catalyst tubs, when you open these tubs, you'll get two bags of catalyst, just like so, and you'll decant those into the bucket. Now, what you'll find is that this can be carcinogenic to your health. So if you're decanting those into the actual bucket itself, please wear respiratory protection. We've looked at the chart on the back of the actual tin, and it will tell you compared to the amount of literage in your bucket and the temperature, it will tell you exactly how many scoops are in there. Always adhere to the manufacturer's instructions due to the fact of if you over catalyze, you could cause stress fractures in the actual products. And if you under catalyze, it won't cure properly. Okay, so on this, for instance, we're gonna take a temperature reading. That's given us a temperature reading of 18 degrees. So from that, we will look on the tin. We've got roughly a liter of products in the system at 18 degrees. That tells us we need two scoops. Going into the actual system itself, we'll put two scoops in. And at this stage, because it's only a small mix, we'll use just a handheld stirrer. And what you want to do is stir it roughly for about a minute or so, just to make sure that that powder dissolves into the actual mix a lot better. Obviously we don't need much because we're only doing a small, small area. But on this, I'd always insist on making smaller mixes in like a two litre bucket or so when you're doing your board joints because it can go off quite quickly depending on the weather conditions. So moving on, when you're looking at the, or your board itself, what you'll need to do is run a line of resin, normally the width of your roller, on the actual board itself. Plenty of resin because you want that to soak up through the actual matting. Install your matting straight down on top and then go back over with the roller to wet the top of the matting. So effectively, the matting is getting attacked from both sides by the resin. You'll get pl plenty of resin down on your board joints. Put your matting onto the actual area and then wet that out completely. And you want to make sure that all of that matting is encapsulated. Obviously, if you're doing this on a large scale, you can get puddles down the side. So I always tend to roll over the matting a little bit wider just to disperse those puddles, because ultimately what's going to happen is that you're going to have puddles down the side and you're going to have to sand those down because you will see that through the actual top coat. You're already going to see the difference in height on an eight before sheet due to the fact that you've put in a matting on top and then you're going to have some more matting to go over the actual deck itself. So you will see these lines transition through the actual deck itself. So what we'll do now is we'll wait for this to attack the matting and what you're looking for is a general test every now and again, just to see if those strands start to move just like that there. What we'll do is we'll go back over with the roller and what you're looking for is a wavy pattern on the actual fiberglass itself. This is the way we know as an installer that it's actually consolidated because you get those wavy patterns. So if I get another bit of fiberglass for instance and lay that next to it, what you'll see is that these fiberglass strands are pretty straight, even though they're crossing each other, they're pretty straight lines. So when we see the wavy pattern, we can see that those strands are actually breaking down and amalgamating in with the system. And you can actually see, you can pull those about a bit. So it's an easy way of testing with your roller, is that consolidated? So literally roll over it, take up any excess down the edges, and that's your reinforcement. 
So moving on, once we've actually taped all of our joints and the joint is actually dry, you can then look at putting your next layer of fiberglass on, which is your first coat of fiberglass. Now, these mats will be laid down onto fiberglass and these will breach the actual deck that you've actually done. So to mix this, it's a very similar process. Obviously, we've got roughly a, a litre or so in the, in the bucket itself. And I just want to show you how we laminate and what to look for and what not to, what not to do. So again, we'll take a, a reading of the bore temperature and we're at 17 degrees there. So straight away, we'll look at the tin and we'll see 17 degrees and we're looking at three scoops of the powder. So again, level scoops. If you over fill it like that, for instance, the more scoops you're doing, you could potentially put an extra 10 in if you're not careful. So always go for level scoops and we need three in that one. So always put the lid back on because you don't want any contaminant in your hardener. Mix this. Now with the, the actual resin itself, a couple of tips I'll give you is on a hot day, for instance, I'd stick the resin in the shade, try and keep it as cool as possible. Obviously you don't want the resin any hotter because that'll add to the temperature in the mix itself. And in the winter, I'd always try and keep it room temperature, i.e. if you can leave it in a garage or something like that. What I normally do is I'd put a pallet down and put the tins on the pallet so that way then it's kept off the floor and the tins don't get as cold. With the actual mix of the resin, I would look at, uh, once we've added the catalyst, I'd give it a stir for a minute to two minutes. Basically, if you think of it like sugar, for instance, you need that to dissolve in like a cup of tea, and it's exactly the same principle. So you want the, the hardener to dissolve as much as it can into the mix, and you want that to be mixed all throughout the actual uh, resin itself. So obviously, on a whisk and a drill, you'd be sort of going up and down in the bucket, on a slow speed though, you don't need to put a lot of, lot of speed in there. Again, you don't want to put heat into the mix. With the 2020 system, unlike standard fiberglass, traditionally standard fiberglass should only be laid down to five degrees. With the 2020 system, you can go down to one degree. So that gives you a longer working period in, as a tradesman into the actual winter itself. So it is quite a good product in that sense. Looking on your OSB board, you don't need to prime the whole board, for instance. You just need to put the resin straight down and then laminate straight into it. So a good rule of thumb is you're looking at 75% of the resin on the deck and then topped up with a 25%. As a, a working rule, you're looking at probably a litre per square metre for your first coat and then half a litre for your second coat, which would be your top coat or your gel coat, depending on your terminology. So again, we're looking at 75%, so we want the roller to go down and you want the roller to skid. If you can hear it like when you're painting emulsion, for instance, and you can hear the roller, you've not got enough on. Okay, guys, so you need that roller to go on and literally skid across. And it looks like you're putting a lot on, but don't worry too much because all of that resin is going to come up through the matting. So if we put the first layer of mat on, for instance, and you'll see naturally the resin starts to come up through the matting straight away. And all we do is we'll grow straight over the matting and we'll consolidate that down. So we've got all the resin coming up through that matting. Now, the beauty about this product is obviously with the resin, once it goes down onto the roof, it is, even though it's wet, still waterproof. So it's a fantastic resin where unlike standard fiberglass, for instance, if the rain came down and, and dropped onto the actual resin itself, it would disperse the catalyst and it'd go milky. So therefore you'd have to scrape off all the resin, scrape off all the roof and then re-laminate that whole area. So therefore it could become quite costly if you've done a large area and got caught out with the rain. With this, it works in your favor. So the rain, even though it's wet, would just sit on top of it and get repelled. You'd wait for it to dry, roughly about 40 minutes or so, and then you could get back onto the roof and dry the roof off, for instance. Now, where your matting goes, if you imagine you was laying two big rolls of matting down, you want to overlap onto the uh, original mat you've actually done. So what we tend to do is we'll have a fluffy edge on the mat. So as you're rolling out the big rolls, you'll have a straight edge and a fluffy edge, for instance. So you always do fluffy over straight because that amalgamates into the deck a lot better and it doesn't leave you with a harsh line you need to sand out afterwards. So roughly, that's where our, our matting starts. So we want to lay that over roughly anything from 50 to 75 mil onto the next matting. And what you'll find with this mat, it is a lot thinner. The tape matting is a 450 gram, so it's a lot densely woven, where the deck matting is a 225, and that's what helps with the flexibility, along with the actual chemical makeup of the actual resin itself. 
So on this, we'll just literally go over the roof and roll those in. On this section now, obviously, once you've got your matting into the actual resin and you've gone over with the extra 25% over the top, this is now waterproof, but we need to consolidate this. Now, unlike standard fiberglass, you have to use a bubble buster or a consolidating roller, which is the metal roller. With this system, we don't. We use a fluffy roller throughout. So whether it's a four inch roller or a, a 10 inch for the actual main deck, it's still the same process. You're looking for those swirly patterns, the same as what you did on this taping, okay? So on this section, you literally just cross roller, forward and backwards, across, and if you can reach the other side as well, go across there, for instance. So you've just got those swirly patterns now that doesn't take a lot of effort whatsoever, just the weight of the roller and the fact that the styrene's actually breaking down the resin gives you exactly what you need. So I don't know if you can see that close up, but you've got the swirly patterns there, for instance, and then you've got sort of gray, for want of a word, gray shredded wheat. Now if you've got very straight lines, that means it isn't consolidated. So what you're looking for is this swirly pattern. And you can just see, Bit like snakes in the actual resin okay so you don't want it straight you want it quite swirly and that's how we know it's consolidated